Saturday morning he would play that piano and play Chopin's music because he wanted to be able to play it right too and he listened to a lot of stereo records of, of Chopin's stuff but uh, he said it was a really neat piano but he was an accomplished musician I mean he could he could play charismatic always smiling you know always you know, joking around. Um, he was just like the fun person to be around. You always wanted to be around Cecil and he would always have silly names for you and he just loved his family. diagnosed with lung cancer is, you know, Cecil smoked all his life. And he knew he ran that risk, you know, and he even said to Becky, you know, right before the two of them, right, when they kind of got together and then all this, he said, if smoking is an issue for you, then we don't need to be doing this because I smoke and I'm not going to quit smoking. So he knew that risk and he knew that one day this could happen and he could get diagnosed with lung cancer. But the thing is, is that it's kind of like when it happened, he owned it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yep, I knew it was a gamble. I knew this could happen and it did. And so um, I'm gonna live life to the fullest until the end.
just didn't show it. I mean, it's just how he was. He just lived to the end. And so when he got, when he left, we were sad because that's a person who you're never going to have that again. You know, you have your memories. But Cecil was uh, a very honorable man. Um, and I feel like that he would have enjoyed knowing that we all gathered here and honored his disbursement of his ashes in a space, place that he felt like was one of the finest places in the world. And that was here at Almond's Point, at Uncle Bo's, at Papa's, Mama's, and his daddy's place.